Hello and welcome back to RC Model Reviews and excuse the mess, I'm in the middle of doing a whole heap of stuff but I thought I'd just do a quick video on these. These are the little keychain cameras. Now I've already looked at the um, number 11 I think it was in an earlier review but a lot of people have been asking me what about the number 16 because it's got some extra features. Extra features such as being able to get live video out of this camera so you could in theory use it for your FPV camera which would be quite nice because they're really small and light. And they're also HD, so one would think that you get a reasonably good image from them. Uh, the problems that we have to look at though is, do we get a full 4x3 image, or is it going to be 16x9, which means you get black bands top and bottom on your video signal, and that's just wasting valuable screen space. So, but first of all, let's, let's take a look at what you get for your money when you buy one of these. Now the usual place to pick these up is on eBay, there's a number of eBay sellers that sell them. Be careful of fakes. I'll put a link, or the name of the eBay seller, which I bought mine from, in the description of this video so you know that you're getting a genuine 720p keychain. Because a lot of them, well not so much now, but there were a lot that were like this that claimed to be HD, but they were still only using a standard definition camera. So they just upscaled it, which means basically you get a really average picture that uses a lot of space, so it's a waste of money. Anyway, so you get your keychain camera, the little 808 keychain camera in a nice little sort of rubberized case. That's quite nice. You get a USB cable because if you want to use these for um, as, a, as a drive, so if you just want to download it straight to your computer without taking out the SD card, you can use this. Also, this is essential for charging because to recharge the internal battery, you have to plug them into a USB power supply. It can be a USB port or one of those little cheapy 5 volt USB power supplies you get from China that are likely to kill you. Um, and it comes with, this is the important lead of course, this is the multiple function USB connector. You can put this in the USB port, like so, and now you've got yourself an FPV live video camera. And the beauty of it is, of course, these have an internal battery about 200 milliampere hours or something, which is good for 45 minutes of recording, but you might want to go on longer FPV flights than that, and you certainly don't want your internal battery dying when you're flying FPV because you lose your video signal. So they nicely provide you with two connectors on here. One of them is for the video signal and one of them is for the power, five volts only. So that can go through your UBEC or the BEC on your ESC. Oh, I'm not a fan of using the BEC on your ESC with FPV because it's a single point of failure. I think you're always much better to use a UBEC, even if it's just one of the little cheapy, cheapy ones that I've had laying around here somewhere. And of course I've always, I've lost. But you can get them really cheap as beans and they do the job so well. You can use a bigger one like this. This is a somewhat bigger UBEC. But even the little tiny ones that I've been using in the backpacks are fine. Now, and obviously to get the video out of here, you can either just, oops, I've just turned that down because it's annoying. Um, you can either just cut this wire here and wire it into your FPV transmitter, or you can just plug this in, they give you another lead which has a standard RCA, but you don't want to carry this weight around. Why carry that weight around? For FPV purposes, you better just use an ordinary servo lead, plug it in there, and then just take the video out, connect it up to your video transmitter. So that means that, you know, she's all go. So what I'm going to do now, oh, you've all seen video from these, um, what I'm going to do now is we'll pull this one apart and see what's inside. And the reason I'm happy to pull this one apart is I've had a bit of bad luck with these things. I got, uh, I got two of them at the same time from the same supplier. One of them worked fine for about, I don't know, a month, and then it developed all sorts of, it would pause and jitter and things. And before anyone says, oh, it's the wrong SD card, no, no, I tried a whole range of SD cards, and none of them worked properly. I tried reformatting them in the camera, class four, class six, class 10, none of them worked. It's actually got a fault. It has a fault, which means that the, the video locks up every few seconds and then freeze up and locks up and freeze up. It's, oh, it's terrible, it's rubbish. So that was bad luck. So I thought, well, I'll get the second one out. And when I got the second one out, it wouldn't charge because the battery in it was absolutely dead flat. So I've transplanted the battery out of the good one into the bad one, and I've ended up out of the two of them, I've got one that actually works. So pff, anyway, so of course I should mention they do have a little slot for a card here. See that little card? And because it's only 720p, not full 1080, you can get by with a just an ordinary class 4 card, you don't need a high speed card, don't waste your money on a high speed card. Um, and, oh, yeah, and you get a little key ring and some 3M Velcro, so you can vel Velcro on here, Velcro on your model. I mean, this one is a dud, so I don't have any Velcro on it, but the one I use, I've always got Velcro on them because you can stick them on anything. You can stick them on a full size aircraft, on your car, on your bike, on your helmet, anything you like, and they become a really great little camera. So let's take this one apart and see what's inside. Maybe we can see why it doesn't work. Getting these things apart is pretty simple. I have a couple of little screws in the back here, little Phillips head screws in there. So you can just get your, this Phillips screwdriver's a little bit big actually, but ugh, it's a shame, but I don't care. 
because I don't really care about this keychain camera. So let's undo those screws. And once you've done that, the little clip, there's two halves to the camera, they actually just separate out and you can get at what's inside. It's actually got some little retainer clips along the front here, so you just have to lift it like so. Do it upside down with the buttons on the bottom. Lift it and it just clicks and pulls free. Wait for the camera to focus. Come on, there you go. Thank you. So there we go. I have uh, now taken the top off the camera. You can see the huge battery inside, and of course that's the battery uh, that is that failed on one of them. But you could replace it. The Hobby King cell battery is the size. You just got to remember to include the little protection circuit in there. If you want to change it, then because they're just stuck on with a bit of double-sided tape. There's a little protection circuit in here. Just unsolder the tabs at each end and solder that protection circuit onto your new battery and you're good to go. So there you go. Once you take that off, you can see all the goodies inside. See that? Here's your card slot, little USB connector. I'll use this. There's your card slot. There's your USB connector. There's the little camera itself, the little camera sensor. A tiny little thing. And there's a lot of very, very small circuitry on that board. But I'll show you one thing that uh, concerned me and I think it may be why my one doesn't work. So there's, a number, there's three little screws here, tiny little screws, I'll take them out. I have to be careful doing this so that I don't short out anything with my screwdriver. Here we go. And one last one in this corner over here. Get back into shot for you. Okay, so now I can, now that I've taken out those three screws, I can actually lift the whole camera board out like so we're gonna look at the back and if we look at the back I don't know if we can see it in the camera but this chip here has got a big pencil mark X on it I wonder if it was a dud and they decided to throw it didn't pass quality control they put an X on it but threw it in anyway who knows this is from China you can't tell um, I'm sure other people have had a lot of luck if there's ever going to be a dud of anything then it comes to me so I'm a great place to send stuff because you know, if, if it works when I get my hands on it, it'll work for you too, because I get all the duds. But anyway, there you go, that's what's in it. There's a lot of stuff in here. There's a huge processor there, another one, another special processor there. There's um, a lot of discrete circ or a lot of individual bits and pieces on the back. So there you go, that's basically what's inside your keychain camera. If you decide to buy one, as I say, buy them from a place that really um, backs up with support, I didn't bother claiming warranty or anything because this has had a, it went dead after a month and I tried it again a couple of months later and a couple of months later, so ugh, no real warranty. Sending it back costs more than they're worth anyway. Um, so there you go, little microphone in here, see that? Uh, so now I guess I'll just have to show you what the video looks like. Let's have a look at some of the recorded video from one of these cameras on 720p, 30 frames a second, and then we'll hook it up and see what it looks like if you try and use it as an FPV camera. So here's the setup for testing the number no, number 16 keychain camera video out, using it as an FPV camera. Now I've got it mounted on the wing here, as you can see, got the USB connector out there. Now I could have run it from the battery in the plane through the UBIC, but I decided just to use the internal battery for this. It's wired into the camera and put on my FPV backpack. So this camera here is not connected at the moment. This camera is. With the FPV backpack, I put a, a, a servo lead in there so I could plug in and out as I needed to so I could use different cameras not just the one that's mounted on it so it worked out quite handy for this test now I've got the Armile C receiver in the front here which is why I've got these cat's whiskers because this is a bit of a double test I'm testing out the Armile C system as well 
to see if it works before I put it in the Finwing Penguin. Now, this is an HD camera. HD and UHF don't often get along that well, but I've tested the noise from this. It's really low. The keychain cameras have a very low noise, although, having said that, that was, only with, that was without this extra lead, so I guess I should really put it on the spectrum analyzer, analyzer again. Just make sure it's not going to drown out the signal from the UHF, because it is pretty close to the antenna. We'd want to lose the model. But apart from that, it's all pretty straightforward. I've got the balance lead power system, so this just plugs into the balance lead of my LiPo to power the backpack. Simple as that. Right, so let's check and see what the keychain camera does to the noise on 430 megahertz. Now, the keychain camera's here. There's not a great deal of dis distance between the camera and the spectrum analyzer's antenna. And let's zoom in a bit on the spectrum analyzer as I turn on the keychain camera. And the keychain camera is on. Nothing happened. So I'm quite confident that the, uh, the keychain camera will not be affecting the UHF gear. Certainly hope not. But let's fly. Let's see what it looks like when you use the number 16 keychain camera as your FPV camera. We'll get a good view of those cat's whiskers in this flight. So this is the day. It's kind of overcast. It's not a bad variation of conditions. Here we've got some really dark sky up here and we've got some brighter light out here. So it's probably a good test of the light handling capabilities of the number 16 keychain camera. I'm going to be recording onto my DVR but unfortunately I've lost the little AV cable for the DVR so I've just hooked it up to a patch and she'll be I'll get Barry to aim it at the plane hopefully we'll get some reasonably good video back from the onboard transmitter okay here we go this is the keychain camera used as an, a live FPV video source and as you'll see it's not very good now ignore the pixelation you know the rather coarse quality because the that's a factor of the a digital video recorder when I use it in this mode so it's not a very high resolution so the resolution is fine but look at the lack of contrast look at the dimness of the picture look at the letterboxing look how there's a big black surround at top bottom and also a little bit on the side so you don't get a very big image put these through your narrow field of view dominators and you'll be squinting to see anything so yeah I don't recommend it as a live FPV video camera And here's what you get if you use the Sony 600 TV line camera, the one I really, really like and I've reviewed on this channel before. Look how bright the picture is, look how vivid the colours are, and look how well it handles changes in intensity of the, of the lighting. Brilliant, absolutely wonderful camera, totally different experience using this. It's a huge picture, takes up the entire frame, and aside from the limitations of this particular video feed, um, obviously it's a brilliant camera. If you go elsewhere on my channel, you'll see a review of this camera. I wouldn't use anything else for my live video camera on FPV. I wouldn't use the keychain camera because by comparison, it's really sad. So there you have it, the 808 number 16 key chain camera, and everybody should have one because they're so useful. Put your Velcro on it, stick it on your plane, stick it on your bike, stick it on your helmet, stick it on your cat, anything you like, and it'll just record wonderful video on micro SD trans flash cards. Now there are a few gotchas with these. Some cards don't work very well on them. Some cards like to be formatted in the camera. And there's a whole lot of resource on RC groups, I think it is. I don't use RC groups because it's mainly full of trolls and a lot of bickering and fighting, but there's also some valuable information there. So if you go to RC groups or just search on uh, Google, you'll find information about how to set these up because you can configure so many options. You notice in the footage I did, the recorded footage, it had a timestamp. That's because the camera was 
um, fresh out of the box, I hadn't reconfigured it, but you can reconfigure a whole lot of stuff in these. In fact, to get the video out, you've actually got to configure them. They come set for no video out. You've got to make a small change to that file, text file, and reboot it with that new text file, and that will then turn on the video out, as well as turn off the timestamp and a whole lot of other stuff. But there you go. I mean, it's hard to find anything wrong with these. They really are good. I mean, they're what, 40 bucks or so? Compare that to the price of a GoPro, and you're getting image quality that's nowhere near as good as a GoPro, but it's certainly better than 10% the quality. So value for money, it's all there in the keychain camera. So I recommend go out and buy one. Um, yeah, there are a number of sources, as I say, a number of places you can buy these. The, there's a link in the description of this video to the place where I bought mine. They seem pretty reasonable. There are plenty of other places, but watch out for the fakes. And um, they produce an MOV file. This one does anyway. I think you can now get them producing an AVI, but um, watch out for the ones that are just standard def dressed up as H. HD because they're not much good and the standard def ones yeah, wouldn't, wouldn't waste your money uh, when you can go high def for not much more so there you go thank you for watching comments on the bottom questions on the bottom and if you've got some footage you've taken with one of these little cameras then put it in a comment put a link to it now you can't put the whole link the youtube.com bit so just put the bit after the slash before watch so you have watch question mark blah 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 from your video and then people can just type youtube.com and then paste in what you've put in your comment and go and look at your wonderful video if you filmed it with the little number 16 keychain camera. So yeah, this is definitely a big thumbs up for this product, even though I got a dud. And I'd say times out of, out of 10, I'd say this is definitely on a value basis. It's a nine out of 10. Performance, it's a seven out of 10. And as a must have, it's a 10 out of 10. I don't know, I couldn't live without mine. Thanks for watching. See you again soon on RC Model Reviews.